welcome to the raucous world of the 1979 film Rock and Roll High School. This cult classic is a roller coaster of funny, shocking, and even sad moments that'll keep you hooked from start to finish. As you dive into the movie, consider this out of the various roles portrayed, which one becomes your instant favorite. But hold on tight, because there's more? Did you know there are lesser known facts and anecdotes about the movie that could leave you fascinated? The journey through Rock and Roll High School unveils surprises that go beyond the surface. As you enjoy the flick, reminisce about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic gem. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Keep watching for the fun, the shocks, the feels, and everything in between. So, who's your standout character, and what fascinating facts have you stumbled upon? Share your experiences below, and let's keep the rock and roll spirit alive. Rock and Roll High School is often hailed as an enduring cult classic from the late 70s and early 80s. The film revolves around the clash between the newly appointed principal, Miss Evelyn Togger, and a rebellious senior named Riff Randall, along with her studious friend Kate Rambo. Riff, portrayed by PJ Souls, is outgoing and carefree, while Kate is a diligent student with a shy and introverted nature. The plot thickens with romantic entanglements involving the football team captain, Tom Roberts, who harbors feelings for Riff, creating a love triangle of sorts. The central conflict unfolds as Miss Togger attempts to instill discipline in Vince Lombardi High School, hindering Riff's pursuit of happiness, especially with the imminent visit of the Ramans, whom she idolizes. The narrative, while maintaining a degree of predictability, unfolds like a slow-motion train wreck, capturing the viewer's attention despite occasional hit or mishumor and music that may not align with everyone's taste. The film's saving grace is the charming presence of PJ Souls, though it becomes apparent that she alone cannot carry the entire weight of the movie. While not without its flaws, Rock and Roll High School manages to keep the audience engaged, prompting one to overlook certain aspects that could have used improvement. It's an average film that, despite its shortcomings, holds a place in the hearts of many fans, especially those who appreciate the era's unique charm and cultural elements. In conclusion, Rock and Roll High School offers a glimpse into the dynamics of high school rebellion intertwined with music, romance, and the pursuit of individuality. It may not be a cinematic masterpiece, but its nostalgic appeal and memorable characters make it a worthwhile watch for those intrigued by the spirit of that era. This review strives to provide an unbiased perspective for potential viewers, allowing them to form their opinions on the film. In the ear mail sequence of the film, handwritten posters adorn the walls, featuring a recruiting poster for the People's Temple offering free cool aid. Another poster promotes a film club's double feature screening of Death Race 2000 directed by Paul Bartle and Hollywood Boulevard directed by Alan Arkush and Joe Dante. Initially, Todd Rundgren was considered for the musical act but couldn't reach an agreement. Cheap Trick was the next choice, but negotiations fell through. Alan Arkush, with connections at Warner Brothers Records, explored options, starting with DeVoe, dismissed for having too strong a concept. Van Halen was also considered, but Warner execs cautioned about their unruly nature. The suggestion of the Ramoths, signed with Warner Brothers Records subsidiary Sire Records, resonated with Arkush, a devoted fan, concluding the search. After the concert, when Riff hands her song to the Ramans backstage, a picture of Sherry Curry, former lead singer of The Runaways, is visible on the wall. Notably, The Runaways and The Ramans had previously toured together. Todd Rundgren, initially considered for a role, regrets turning it down to this day. These behind-the-scenes details add intriguing layers to the making of the film, showcasing the challenges and decisions involved in shaping its unique musical identity. During the final day of filming, director Alan Arkush faced exhaustion and was hospitalized. To complete the remaining scenes, Joe Dante stepped in to direct pivotal moments, including PJ Soul's rendition of Rock and Roll High School in the gym, the extended take in the bathroom, and a scene featuring a telephone booth. Despite portraying a high school student, PJ Souls was 28 during filming, surpassing the age of three out of the four Ramans, making her older than most of her on-screen counterparts. The motorcycles used by the hall monitors were repurposed death machines from the film Death Sport, a project overseen by executive producer Roger Corman the previous year. 
these intriguing behind-the-scenes details shed light on the challenges faced during the production of Rock and Roll High School, showcasing the dedication of the filmmakers and the unique circumstances that shaped the movie's final scenes. In the later part of the film, during the Ramones concert at the Roxy, the late Darby Crash, lead singer of the Germs, can be spotted in the front row. A subtle nod to the burgeoning punk scene, this cameo adds a touch of authenticity to the movie's music-centric narrative. Under the closing credits, the romantic theme song, Did We Meet Somewhere Before?, is heard, sung by Paul McCartney and Wings. Originally penned for the movie Heaven Can Wait in 1978, director Alan Arkush secured the rights for a mere 500, with the condition that McCartney remains uncredited. A savvy move that gave the film a notable soundtrack without breaking the bank. Notably, Dick Miller, playing a character, spontaneously delivers the line those Ramons are ugly, ugly people, showcasing the unscripted and candid nature of his performance. A subtle touch of humor that adds a raw edge to the movie's atmosphere. These lesser-known facts offer glimpses into the film's production, from unexpected cameos to budget-friendly soundtrack deals and spontaneous on-screen moments. Each detail contributes to the unique charm of Rock and Roll High School, showcasing the filmmaker's resourcefulness and the film's connection to the punk and rock culture of its time. Eagle Bauer's character in the film was originally intended for Eddie Deason, who was occupied with Steven Spielberg's 1941. Due to Deason's unavailability, Clint Howard took on the role. The Ramons, integral to the film's soundtrack, were compensated with a total of $25,000 for their appearance. To cover hotel expenses, the band performed live shows in Southern California during the 21-day shoot. Notably, D.D. Ramon faced legal troubles, including an arrest for a scuffle with a roadie, leading to an overdose in jail, and a subsequent hospitalization at Cedars-Sinai with a 3,000 medical bill. During the on-screen concert, genuine Ramon's fans attended, whose unruly behavior unnerved lead actress P.J. Souls. These backstage details shed light on the challenges faced during the production, showcasing the last-minute casting changes and the gritty realities encountered by the Ramons, providing a glimpse into the unique circumstances surrounding the making of the film. Mary Warrenoff, portraying the authoritative Principal Togger, is just seven years senior to P.J. Souls, who takes on the role of the rebellious high school student Riff Randall. As a subtle nod to producer Roger Corman's renowned budget-conscious approach, the movie humorously incorporates the sound of birds going cheap, cheap, cheap during the New World Pictures credit sequence. In Riff's bedroom scenes, notable albums like Bob Dylan's Highway 61 Revisited, The Who's Who's Next, The Rolling Stones' Sticky Fingers, and The Raman's Road to Ruin are showcased, providing a glimpse into the character's musical taste. These intriguing details, sourced from a reputable website, offer insights into the character's ages, the film's playful nod to its budget constraints, and the music that defines the protagonist world. Mount Carmel High School, situated in South Central Los Angeles and shut down since 1976, served as the backdrop for the high school scenes in the film. The school's closure added an authentic touch to the movie's portrayal of a rebellious teenage spirit. Interestingly, the explosive finale depicting the school's destruction wasn't a planned spectacle. The detonation, five times larger than intended, startled nearby residents who, in the middle of the night, emerged from their homes, bewildered by the unexpected blast. The budget-conscious Roger Corman, known for his thrifty approach, ingeniously invited music journalists to act as extras on the film set. In exchange for their involvement, they gained access to the set and had the opportunity to interview key figures. This move showcased Corman's knack for publicity and resourceful filmmaking. During the production, the Ramons, pivotal to the film's soundtrack, were simultaneously working on their end of the century album. This dual commitment highlights the band's dedication and multitasking abilities, contributing to the distinctive sound of both the movie and their musical catalog. The convergence of a closed-down high school, unexpected pyrotechnics, Roger Corman's budget-friendly tactics, and the Ramones' simultaneous recording endeavors provides a glimpse into the dynamic circumstances that shaped the production of Rock and Roll High School. These behind-the-scenes details, sourced from a reputable website, offer insights into the unique challenges faced during the film's making, emphasizing the film's authenticity and the unconventional methods employed by its creators. 